Yes. Welcome, we welcome everyone. Thank you, Jeremy Wineglass, our pianist in residency for the excellent intro music and for your constant willingness to share your remarkable talents with us, Jeremy. Thank you. Welcome Rotarians and special guests. My name is Matt Ball, president of LA5, and welcome to the ninth meeting of our 112th year of LA5 Rotary, is fifth oldest Rotary club in the world. We share the stage, as you know, with over 35,000 Rotary clubs in over 200 countries and territories across the globe with membership over 1.2 million. So we appreciate you joining us here, with, joining with us today. This is a special meeting, a special time for us on Fridays, but particularly this special day of remembrance and respect and special regard for those who both gave their lives on this day in New York's Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, as well as those who died in the Pentagon. And of course, we will not forget those who gave their lives in the airplanes of those who were hijacked for those horrific deeds, and especially for those brave hero passengers who sacrificed their lives by bringing down that plane in the Ohio field instead of into the, our nation's capitol buildings or the White House. So we honor this day and, and to honor it, we uh, particularly appreciate Melinda Monterosa, who's really put forth a wonderful program that we might in another fashion memorialize this day for our LA5 Rotarians. And then to do this, we're gonna dedicate this day and this meeting with our service above self efforts by realizing and perhaps quantifying what or how significant our service contributions can be both personally and institutionally. So under the banner of our Rotary uh, insignia and our, our motto and all that we represent, we're gonna break up into special groups today and talk about some of the things that uh, you've already seen as you've signed up for this meeting, feeding and supporting frontline workers, supporting veterans, spreading kindness, not just with random acts, but with deliberate acts of kindness, youth mentorship, youth mentorship, uh, and literacy, of course. So we'll come back together as a group and summarize our discussions, and then hopefully we'll be able to see some more ways in which we can engage and be a part of the solution where service not only defines us, but guides us like an internal beacon, a light that we just can't keep hidden within us. So with that in mind, we've got a wonderful beginning to this meeting today. And Melinda, again, we turn a little time over to you because you've got a special tribute video that we'd like to begin with. After we do that, Melinda, we'll, uh, we've got more words to say about that little few in words of inspiration. So Melinda, why don't you lead us out here, please? Yep, just a quick tribute video. One second here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let's try this again. Well, sorry, everybody. We'll pick this up where we left off or try to. It was on the interior shot when they were inside the building. All right. It, it looks well, like you're, you're frozen too, Melinda. Yeah. Paul X Tran, it's Super great. Fun. <laughs> Paul X Tran, it's great to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. I hope Thank you feel better. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate that. We know you and your family okay. have really been through it. So thank you. Been missing everybody though. We missed you, Paul. Let's try this again. We're almost through this, guys. <laughs> Hold on. I'll rewind just a tad here. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, everybody, technical, major technical difficulties. Let's pretend you watched a roughly four to five minute tribute video that moved your emotions so much and made you reflect on 9-11 and made you feel all the feels. And I will send everybody a link to this video so that you can watch it on your own time. Um, but I don't want to keep beating a dead horse here and, and our heads against the walls. Apologies. That's a right, Melinda. Hey, we know what this technical difficulty is all about. You're still frozen as well, Melinda. Perfect. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> no, that's all right. Hey, thank you very much, though. We appreciate that. We, you know, Melinda and I talked about it with our executive committee. We've talked about it a lot here wow. because this day, we really wanted to dedicate this and to frame this properly with you and centering it around service. The thoughts that really came to our mind is that that's really a sweet way in which we can focus our energies and really memorialize this day in the very best way. As such, we know that we all have stories. I think all of us can remember exactly where we were standing, what we were thinking, what we were doing on 9-11 when it first came to us that all this was happening. And as I reflected on that, I was able to take my wife and my daughters and we went to New York and went to Ground Zero and actually went to the memorial where, uh, as my youngest daughter was not even born, uh, when 9-11 occurred, when this tragedy occurred, we sat there with her and as my wife and I were reading the inscriptions and all the names and standing at those incredible fountains in this, this very sacred space, there were so many people around us and so much, uh, I don't know, voices to be heard. Despite all of that, it completely went away as my daughter and my wife and I were sitting there and my wife and I could barely speak, were completely emotional. And my daughter looked at us and said, hey, how long do you think we're going to stay here? And then she looked over at us and realized that we were completely stopped. And she got silent because she realized it was a very sacred thing for us. And it was one of those moments in our life where my wife and I just couldn't say a word. And we just gave such great thanks. And it was 
a long time of some very personal reflection and some very personal prayers about uh, dedicated for all those people who died on that day and have died since <clears throat> regarding these things. But uh, Melinda and I just wanted to share a few moments with you, this inspirational moment, and perhaps let you share as well. Melinda, I wanted to turn some time over to you as well. Yeah, so I mean, our every week we, we share in a few traditions as a club, one of which is an inspirational moment. Typically one person shares their one moment, but we thought we might, um, you know, today is a, a day of service and remembrance. And um, we thought we might offer it up on the reflection part for multiple people to share in this moment of inspiration. And if anybody wants to share a few moments around your reflection on 9-11, reflecting on where you were. Um, you just heard President Matt share his, his thoughts. Uh, please use the raise hand function and, and we'll, we'll have like three or four people share here. And Mr. Past President Weiss. <laughs> wow, that was fast. Um, sorry, starting my video. You know, I, um, I was here in LA and uh, my good friend called me and said, turn on your TV. And I turned on the TV and I saw the second plane crash into the building. And uh, I got on the phone with my dad and my dad um, told me he had to get off because he was on with the, um, with the army because he predicted that the building was going to collapse at that moment because he knew how the building was put together. Very unique construction. They were, uh, metal hooks that held up each floor all the way around. When the airplane hit it, it what happened was, the, sure, the fire happened, but they melted all those hooks, which is why it collapsed on itself. It was a very unique construction. But what I really wanted to share was I only found out years later that I had a, a colleague, a friend in, uh, in uh, college, in acting school, who died in the thing, which I didn't find out. For, for many, many years. And when I went back uh, to New York a couple of years ago to produce an event for the Navy SEAL Foundation, I went to the, uh, the museum. And if you've never been to the Memorial Museum, it's spectacular. It's really one of the best of those things I've ever experienced. And it was very, very moving to go and find the name of my friend who was just going to an audition in the Rainbow Room that, that day on the, on the rooftop restaurant. Um, so anyway, uh, I just think about her all the time on this day. Of course, I had lots of friends in New York at the time. I even had an in-law who used to, who had just literally the month before moved out of the building to a new office. So tragic. Oh, tragic. Thank you so much for sharing. Is there anybody else that has any thoughts or reflections they might be willing to share? Yes, this is Carmen Shea. How are you? Thank you, Carmen. Um, it was um, early in the morning. It was six in the morning, and I was getting ready to go to work. I worked downtown. Oh. Carmen, you ex I think you accidentally went on mute. Okay. There All we right. go. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. I worked downtown and uh, my husband was still in bed because he didn't have to go to work till nine. And so uh, my husband's a New Yorker and I remember I, we, I had turned the TV on in the bedroom and I told him, Gordon, Gordon, wake up, look at this, look at this. And we had just been in New York and had toured the World Trade Center building about three months before. And he put on his glasses and he looked at, and he said, oh my gosh, there's going to be thousands of people that are going to die from this. Thousands. I didn't believe him, but he was right. And it was really interesting because it got to be 730. My secretary was already in her office and um, she called me and she says, oh, Dr. Shea, I am so scared. Everybody here downtown is so scared. I want to go home. Can I go home? I said, of course, Barbara go on home, you know, get in your car and go home, be safe. It was just really, really a real, you know, stunning moment because we were all in shock. Uh, and so I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much, Denise. 
Uh, yes. Uh, good, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, that day <clears throat> I was in a rush getting out and going down to the city club to have breakfast with Randy Lee, our, you know, passwordarian. And uh, we were, I, all, all I saw was a brief, I thought it was a clip of an action film that was, to, you know, they were promoting an action film. And so I, but I just jumped in the car, went down and I said, Randy, I, I'll be there in a few minutes. And I got down there and the parking lot people said, sorry, Denise, you know, you've got to turn around. We're closing the building. You can't go up to the city club. And uh, so Randy and I just met outside and we decided to say a few prayers. And then we went for food somewhere else. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a moment. And then I think about Randy a lot, but this day I think about him. Thank you so much for sharing. That's um, a great reflection, especially that includes a passwordarian. I see past president Jay not on mute. Did you want to share something? No, uh, no. just want to show your mask. You're a very cool mask. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, about guys that I'd like to share. Oh, perfect. Please. Uh, I had an office in downtown Manhattan when that building, when those buildings were being built. So they go way back, but on the day that I had a niece whose office was on a floor that a plane went into. And uh, it was quite a loss. If I may share. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, today is going to be, as always, a tough day for families first responders, anyone who had anything to do during that event. As a wife of a first responder at the uh, Oklahoma City bombing, this is always a tough day for us because we closely remember what happened there as well. So as you go through it, please remember them as well because the ones that are gone, we are here to respect, but the ones that are living and taking this and bearing the pain, they have a heavy, heavy thing in their heart. And which every year that this goes by and we remember it, they have to remember the ones they lost or what they had to do to search and rescue for the survivors. Thank you. Thank you, Shala. Uh, I believe Jermaine has a story, the infamous Jermaine E. Hey everybody. Uh, as some of you may know, I transferred membership to New York Rotary last year and I spent a year there. And I really got to know the president of Rotary of New York at the time of 9-11 and her name is Helen. And she shared the story of what had happened as the Rotary president at the time. Um, she, was, she was going to downtown for work and she saw that the building was on fire and people started blowing up her uh, home phone. And before she, know, before she realized, checks were coming in from Rotary clubs from all over the world. And one thing she said to me that really stuck with me uh, was that she said, an organization that usually focuses on challenges all over the world suddenly had to focus on a crisis at home. And I thought that was a really cool uh, little experience uh, for me to get to know her being in the front line of uh, being a Rotarian at the time. So I thought, thought that would be a cool story to share. Very cool story. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Last call. Diane? Oh, you're on mute, Diane. We had just woken up, we'd been up for a while, and my mother called, my family, most of them live back east, and she said to me, where's James? And I said, what do you mean, where's James? James is my nephew, my sister lives back east, and she called me, and I said, mom, I don't know what you're talking about, where's James? And she said, turn on the TV. At that time, our nephew had just graduated from Penn, was working on Wall Street, yeah. and nobody could find him. And about 11 hours later, we found him and he had walked maybe 12 miles through all of that to get out of the city. And you know, you, the 11 hours trying to think where he might be and with no contact 
is so frightening. And then today, many of the people in our building are from New York. It's just weird in our condo. And I've talked to a couple of people today and they were all there and they all have different stories and they are all going through a lot of heartache today. So we need to think about those people too. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you for that reminder. Um, Bo? Where's Bo Lee? Yeah, on 9-11 at that, that year, um, I was working at the um, U.S. Bank Tower and my wife, whom I met there, she was also working at that, that building. And I found out a few years later that um, that building was a target. And had they not got the time zones incorrect, that was, that was a building that was supposed to be hit at the same time as the, the Pentagon and, and so forth. So that just kind of, kind of thinking back about that is like, you know, we wouldn't, <clears throat> wouldn't be here today if, if they had, you know, coordinated properly, I guess, you know, and, um, and we used to go in really early to the office. So we were there like at, I don't know, 6 a.m. So if they just had to just kind of fix me out a little bit when they, um, you know, um, you know, when I heard about that. So that's what I wanted to share. I have one idea. Please. This is, this is Don Crocker. Should I go ahead? Uh, yes, and then after you, we'll hear from uh, Ann Ruth. Okay, my, my observation is that we should be remembering all the po folks that signed up for the military to respond to uh, this tragedy, uh, to remove all the terrorists that caused it, and that they should be considered in, in, in included in our prayers and our thoughts because an awful lot of folks have been seriously injured or killed in that pursuit. Great reminder. Thank you, past president Don. We will absolutely all do that. Anne Ruth. Hi, well, I was at a computer forensic conference in Long Beach and all the people there were from from all the different companies, big five, Fortune 500 companies. And so when they got the call that the buildings were on fire, they all had to go go home and go, not go home, go to work and save the IT department to keep the companies running. So they fled. So they were first responders to keep the company running and to keep everybody going. So they took off. And these were major corporations that they were supporting. So they had to take off and go to New York and be involved with their company. So they were, they were not really acknowledged like the fire department or the police department, but they were critical of keeping the, their companies up and running. So it was really a neat, unique situation of seeing how devoted they were to fly to New York in this time. And then everybody else at the conference thought that they were gonna get bombed, the building was gonna get bombed because it was a tech conference, a computer technology conference. And they really wanted to bomb the West Coast. So it was a little scary day, but they were another form of first responders. But we thank all those that did serve. Yeah, That's what all. a very unique perspective. Thank you so much. Um, Lance, I believe you had your hand up. Lance Miller, did we lose him? Melinda? Go ahead, past president, Dave. Hi. Um, I was uh, president of the club that year and I'm looking around at this screen and I see a lot of people that were members of the club other members of the club with me. Um, it really, really sh shocked and devastated uh, everyone. Um, I came downtown that day, Tuesday morning, and uh, we were having a meeting at the breakfast club at the Jonathan Club, and uh, we adjourned the meeting uh, 
although a lot of people showed up, we just didn't know what to do. You know, we, but they came in and they closed the building and so we all left. I didn't, uh, there was a, a lot of uh, companies that had closed and had sent their employees home and we weren't sure when anybody was gonna come back and it was a big question about whether or not we should have a meeting that week. Uh, the speaker that we had was a pastor and uh, I spoke with him and he said, I'm coming and, and we talked a little bit and decided that it might be a very opportune time <laughs> to have the word of God uh, at our club and so, uh, we encouraged everybody to come, and in the way that Rotary has become the community for so many of us, we got together and we had a wonderful, wonderful meeting that day. Uh, and it was a really an opportunity for everyone to recognize just how much of an impact the relationships that we develop at Rotary mean to each other. So, uh, my daughter was a uh, or is a doctor in New York, and on that day, they all, all the doctors reported to their respective hospitals, and there weren't any any ambulances coming to them. Uh, it was it was truly a horrible, horrible situation, and and as Eric mentioned, if you have the opportunity to go and visit uh, the World Trade Center, it's a really extraordinary museum that they that they have there, and you realize walking around that you're in a cemetery, and uh, it's very very moving to be there. Anyway, I'm I'm really glad to be sharing this day with with my Rotary family. God bless all of you. Same. Thank you so much for sharing. I think we have Lance back. Lance, do you want to share and we can wrap this? Can you, can you hear me, Melinda? Yes. Okay, and I apologize. I had to get on the car and I think I blasted somebody because I couldn't figure out how to mute my phone. Um, this, just a couple points that have really stuck with me. I remember that morning I woke up and I, was, I had to run out to a meeting and I just thought I'd turn the TV on really quick. And if I hadn't turned the television on, I wouldn't have seen what happened. But every morning I get up and I wonder if the world's still here. And I turn the TV on and never know what it's going to be on the television set, if there's some other major disaster. And it's interesting, just that, that effect of turning on the TV and wondering, is there going to be good news or horrific news like we saw? But the other thing that's really stuck with me, and this is just almost metaphorical for life, was that how long did it take to build those those towers and how long did it take to destroy them and when i look at life it and people and civilizations and families it, it can take so much work to build something that's worthwhile and it can just take a second with somebody uncaring or evilly intended to destroy it and um that's just a reminder to me every day that i try to keep that everybody is working to create something positive in their life and making sure I'm not the one that touches it and crumbles their building in the process of that. And I think that, that, you know, it's something we, that that's really stuck with me on how, how the amount of work it took to build those buildings and then rebuild them and how quickly they came down with the destruction on it and just being mindful of that. So thank you. Gosh, what a uh, reminder and reflection. Thank you. Last reflection from Kathleen, and then we'll move on to the fun stuff for today. I was struck by when Matt was saying he and his wife were standing at the site of 9-11 and they were speechless with pain. And their little granddaughter or daughter, I think it was a granddaughter, was oblivious because history disappears so fast. And if you don't keep it alive or share it with your children or others, they won't know what you're talking about in as soon as 15 years or so. And I have a quick thing on that. I had never seen my father cry. And I was very young when Martin Luther King was shot. 
but I'll never forget that because that night at the dinner table, my father had the radio on real low, which he never did at the table. And it was Martin Luther talks in his, I have a dream speech. And my father had tears running down his face. So as a young girl, I will never forget Martin Luther King being shot. Wow. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, well, I hope that everyone found the, this sort of expanded moment of reflection beneficial and in the spirit of just getting to know each other a little bit more intimately. You heard lots of thoughts and reflections today from your fellow Rotarians. So hopefully the past 10 minutes or so have been a meaningful use of your time. I know it personally, it has been so uh, heart wrenching for me and just uh, thought provoking. Um, we have a couple of club updates. I'll kick it back to you, Matt, before we get on to the breakout rooms. Thank you, Melinda. Appreciate that. Thank you for giving me a moment here to gather myself. That was really special. Thanks for everybody uh, expressing their thoughts and sharing their sentiments and their experiences. Very, very memorable day for us. Uh, it's kind of hard to switch gears, but uh, excuse me while I do. We've got a little business, but it's good business and it's a special business because with John Green serving as our executive director and volunteering to do so and stepping in during Eric's year and making it not just a a precedent to do that, but really by his example and his dedication and his unending efforts and service. If you have had any opportunity to work with John Green, you know how special it is and how <laughs> dogged he is on every detail. He's amazing. And to try to replace John was a very difficult thing. And I don't think there's anybody that we would have ever thought could do that, except that when you think of Sharice Lara, you're like, oh, well, there's someone that's that's equally as efficient and equally as wonderful. And then as we start to name so many other Rotarians, we realize that you're all made and cut from the same cloth, but we're fortunate enough to wear all of, out of all that fabric and all of that unique tapestry here we have in Rotary, uh, Sharice Lara has stepped up and volunteered to be our executive director this year. And I feel so grateful because as, as president needing and knowing that we have this awesome responsibility, Sharice, has dedicated so much of her time already to everything and everything that we do, not just on the website, but the things you don't see behind the scenes and the things that she participates in. Uh, as you all know, Sharice is, uh, she's efficient to a fault and a great, great demeanor and a lovely personality. Besides being a beautiful woman, it makes it easy for us to just have business as usual, but be extraordinarily usual and unusual in Rotary because of her. So we welcome Sharice as our new executive director and thank you very much for accepting this responsibility, Sharice. We, we take that as a real privilege because our board voted, everyone said, yes, let's do this. So thank you very much for accepting that. And Sharice, you're welcome to say anything if you'd like to before we turn it over for the next piece of business. I'll just say thank you to um, the executive committee and the board for uh, trusting in me to be in this role. It's, it's honestly just really a pleasure to serve a club that has served me um, in so many different ways. And so I just look forward to being um, a support engine to, to each of you as you continue to lead this club. So, and look forward to uh, working even more with, with all of our members, um, but really just value uh, being able to serve so thank you guys for your confidence. And thank you, John, for uh, putting some, some big shoes out there to fill. So I still will keep him close in, uh, in, in this kind of path that I'm on. Thank you so much, Sharice. It's um, in all the other organizations that I work in, it's primarily volunteer. So to have everyone step up like this, it's not just part and parcel of what I do, but I already know that we have a saying in my business and in my work, and that is be, be very careful what you ask people to do because they will do it in Rotary and in my church, but Rotary especially because people are so committed to this. And so we respect and, re and revere your effort. Thank you. Thank you so much. I uh, also wanted to report on something extremely uh, effective that has occurred and it's because of our special committee. I, so, so many thanks go out to the special committee that was put together and Paul Nesso, thank you for leading this committee and Paul, or Diane, if you're there, Alan, if, if Paul, are you here with us right now? I see Diane here, but I don't know if he is. Paul? Yes, I am. Sorry. 
Wonderful. Would you like to give a shout out? I'd like you to name every person on your special committee that created our community conversation and make sure that they're recognized here with us because after our community conversation occurred last week and your report to the executive committee, I wanted to let everyone know that they're now, this, this same special committee is going to report to our board and have a real download of, of all of the things that occurred here, positive and the things we can do better and things we can, how we can proceed. But ultimately the equation of diversity and equity and inclusion is really the mantra that we have come away with. And Paul, I just wanted to recognize you, you and your special committee with a, a grateful heart and a special thanks to all of us. But I wanted you to give a shout out to each one of those, please. And, well, and happy happy well, birthday, thank, Paul. Happy. Yeah, well, thank you so much on both counts. Uh, well, of course, Cherise, <laughs> Laura already uh, acknowledged, and, and, Laura, uh, and Cherise, thank you so much for taking on that responsibility. And our committee must feel that uh, you probably gained so much in energy and enthusiasm of the work of our committee that you said, this is, I've got to continue this kind of, uh, load. So uh, we, we kind of gave you basic training. But uh, Charlene uh, Demas Pianato and uh, Alan Bernstein, Tiffany Rollins, Lauren Schlau, and uh, Walker Rayleigh. I think I got everybody. And, uh, and we had, of course, uh, uh, other uh, people contributing uh, and so many members of our club and so many on this, this particular event today, this meeting. Uh, attended the um, community conversation that we had a couple of weeks ago and, and uh, probably equally important to us was that you provided feedback both going into the meeting as well as after the conversation. And, uh, and so we had a chance to give the executive committee a report uh, earlier this past week and we're gonna be giving an update and report, if you will, with recommendations to the board of directors. Uh, this coming Friday, a week from now, and uh, and very likely there will be a follow-on report of some sort to the membership as a whole. So uh, thank you, Matt, for your leadership and for the opportunity to be of service to you and to the club. Thank you very much, Paul, and for your special committee. Uh, and we take very seriously your charge and your request that we now pick up the ball and carry on with what your committee has been doing and really make this a club practice and a common part of our culture so that our culture becomes very ingrained and imbued with diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I say this to you because even last night as I was speaking to one of my colleagues out of Chicago regarding Chicago One, Rotary, and she had never heard or had been a part of Rotary and wondered what Rotary meant to me. So I spent quite a long time last night with her as we were talking about the special service project that Melinda is helping us organize with all the first five clubs. And as I said it to her, I, she said, so is it a club of 65 year olds and, and, and over? What's up with this? And I'm like, wow, let me help you. Let me help you. So I said, we're fortunate enough to have some very young members of our club, but they're the ones it's the young guns in our club that are really changing the perspective and the outlook of how Rotary is really perceived and advancing and progressing. And this diversity and equity and inclusion that our club is really trying to make a part of our culture is because of that young spirit and because of this beautiful effort that took place in our community conversation. So I, I'm privileged and honored to be a part of this year in particular because as extraordinary as it is virtually, I feel like it, it's easier for us to be connected because of these things. So. It's a wonderful thing to brag about us and to, to give a huge tribute to Rotary all around. But thank you again for the special committee and for that update opportunity. We, we'd like to turn a little bit of time over to Marjorie Heller. Marjorie, and forgive me, I, want, I need to stop for just a second and let you know that because of these personal reflections and of these, this day, I hope you don't mind if we're going to run probably a few minutes late. So I hope you give us the benefit of the doubt on this. It feels like not a big time that we're going to go over, but nevertheless, enough to where everybody gets a chance to talk because we do want to hear a little bit more from you as we do a breakout session. But before then, we wanted to turn just a little bit of time over to Marjorie Heller and then back to you, Melinda, for direction on our breakout section. So Marjorie, if you are okay. there. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Um, today, uh, to control the time, I actually pre-recorded a narrative so I wouldn't get blamed by uh, um, like the, uh, the, the person controlled the time like a president met. So um, Melinda Shai, do you let me share the screen so I can load the, the, um, the PowerPoint? Yep, you should be able to share. Okay. Uh, share. Wait a second. 
how can I enlarge? Let's see. So if you want to open that document. Yes. I did. Let's, let me just stop for a second. Okay. Um, okay. Jesus. Um, how can I? Okay. Do you have the document open, Marjorie? Yes. Uh huh. Yes, I do. So then, when you hit the share screen button, it should um, give you op like a bunch of window options. Yes. Choose the one with the document in it. Okay. Uh, let me just just wait me get me a second. Let me close okay. this. Okay. Uh, do you want me to show as a start as a slideshow? from the beginning? Sure, yeah. Uh, Cause we're, right now we're seeing your um, like file folder, I think it is. I'm sorry. I think I'm in having, okay, on the, on the PowerPoint, I clip on the slideshow. There from you the, go. From the, from the beginning? Yep. Okay. Then, and then I think you might need to minimize or close your documents folder. Document folder, okay. Uh, you mean this? There you one? go. Oh, hold on. Now I got to share screen again, sorry. Okay. Marjorie, do you want to email it to me and then maybe we can share it after the breakout sessions? Okay, then maybe that's a good, better idea. But yes, that'd be good. Let's do that. You can email it to me and then when we come back, we'll share it. Okay. Thank Perfect. you. Sorry, President Matt and everyone, all, everybody. It's that's 2020. Good. Everything goes. <laughs> <laughs> that's only about three minutes out of your time, so don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would be right. really difficult. I'm already trying to do the, uh, the best I can keep it short. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we are going to move into the service part of today. So for those of you who may have missed my email this week, you know, um, there's a little bit of history on 9-11 and how it came to be known as Patriot Day and National Day of Service and Remembrance. Um, we just went through a few minutes of reflection and remembrance, and now we are going to focus on service. Uh, on 9-11, every, every year, and every year since 2002, Americans across the country are called to volunteer in their local communities in tribute to the individuals lost and injured in the attacks, first responders, and the many who have risen in service to defend freedom. This is how the people of the United States have chosen to never forget September 11th. We have chosen to be in service. And um, what more appropriate way for us to spend our time together today um, than doing deeds of service. So there is an organization um, called 9-11 Day that was started by families um, of those who fell during 9-11, during the attacks on 9-11, 2001. And, um, their goal this year is to uh, lock in uh, millions of deeds of service. And we as a club are gonna log deeds of service uh, and contribute to this effort, this, this national effort that's going on today with 35 plus million Americans um, all over. And so we're gonna break out into groups. You, when you registered, picked an area of focus that you wanted to focus your deeds of service. The goal today is to go into your breakout groups and either execute on deeds of service or pledge to execute on deeds of service. Keep in mind, these are things that small, we're nothing's too small, right? We don't, today's focus is not about coming up with big elaborate projects for the club. It's about, um, 
small things that you can do within your power to lift people up around you or to help someone and, and walk away feeling good having done so. So I am going to um, upload a file to the chat to help out, but you also have facilitators in your respective breakout rooms that um, have some resources to get things started. Like I said, no idea is too small. Um, just execute on it and, and let's help each other out. And we've got about 20 minutes to do this. And when we come out of this, we'll share, you know, how many deeds of service we've, we've either done or have pledged to do um, so that we can log them as a club to the overall organization. And with that, I will put you all into your breakout rooms. Have fun. See you in 20 minutes. Is that working? There we go. Uh oh. There we go. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we've got a few people left here. If you're still here in the main space, you might need to put a little, click a little thing on your screen to move to the breakout room, just FYI. Hey Barry, I don't know if, do you have a thing on your screen to put you into a breakout room? Oh, you're not assigned, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it says, please wait to be assigned. Oh goodness, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, no problem. Remind me where you needed to go, feeding frontline workers, literacy, mental health, spreading kindness. I was looking to work with uh, mental health. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Sorry for that. Okay, no problem. There we go.
See if I can get away with some video. I might freeze. Hi, Melinda. How was your breakout group? It was good. It was very good. Nice to, um, you know, we tried to commit to each doing an act of service as was suggested, and I thought that was excellent, really, uh, the way you defined it. Wonderful. Magic. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Yeah. What right. did happen, I think we've got, we've got most got everybody. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Oh. Right. Feedback here. Okay, so now's the time where we get to share a little bit. I'm gonna ask the facilitators or um, whoever they decided in each group to give a little report out on what we were able to accomplish or pledge to accomplish today. And we will report as a club to the 9-11 day organization, our deeds so that um, those can get logged and contribute to the overall effort. So I will start with President Matt. Thank you, Melinda. We had a good group. I, I have to say that we really focused our efforts on what Tim Brown is working on right now. And Tim's got a great thing, and he's developed a relationship with a teacher in downtown, uh, well, in Compton. And in Compton, where he, that particular pastor is trying very hard to develop a literacy program within his school and then expand it out. And so we talked about the resources that are available for that. We've also worked with Desi Davis. Tim has and we have trying to be in Rotaract to actually be a part of that. We talked about the resources available for that and then found out that Kathleen Kavanaugh is a literacy expert. This is, this is her wheelhouse and what a, what a wonderful revelation to learn this in that she has not only taught and been educated but has statistics at the top of mind at all times that she can report on such as those that are incarcerated and the illiteracy rate of those who are incarcerated is upwards around 70 to 80 percent and it's so shocking, in fact, that we had talked about if literacy, if they had been able to read, at least able to read, that, that number could be reduced greatly, perhaps. So we're talking about ways in which we could approach this personally. And, and Tim's efforts right now are, are well down the road enough to where we are trying to find ways to fill in the efforts that he's already making in this regard with this pastor, because it involves and includes so much of what we as Rotarians can do that we really have to tip our hat to Tim and all the, the, the background and the experience and the history that you put into this, trying to at least find solutions for us as Rotarians to engage here. So we feel like we've got steps and know what we're trying to accomplish, but COVID is very restrictive in trying to bring us together or keeping us from coming together and doing that. Nevertheless, I think we see what we have to do. It's a matter of getting the ability to do it simply because COVID is keeping that restriction so, uh, so much of a barrier right now. Yeah. Uh, Tim, anything else to add to that, Tim? Sure, Tim Brown, Tim Brown fashion, go big or go home. Is There's what a lot to be done out there. The opportunities are endless. Thank you, Melinda. Amazing. All right. I will go to past president Alan Bernstein next for youth mentorship. Okay. Uh, I uh, got two recruits for the scholarship committee. That's uh, nice. uh, Tammy and Germain. Happy about that. Uh, Past President Mike Burkholm is, um, is a receiving location for scouts, and they are doing scouting for food, uh, and they are collecting food to uh, bring to shelters. That is fantastic. Um, Jose uh, has been involved with so many things, but the one thing he's going to do moving forward is involved with the Salvation Army, and he's going to be inviting young people to help ring the bells and to participate in the float decoration. Uh, and uh, one last thing is we felt that um, if we could start to adopt a school, we felt maybe all of Rot Rotary Club should adopt a school. Uh, that would help to build equity within the school district. Uh, and we have a high school that uh, recently lost some of their sponsors uh, that's very close to us in downtown. So we would like to consider adopting a high school. Uh, local to us and supporting them and let's see where they are in their baseline today and see where they are in two years three years and see if we can help them to improve that's our story wonderful um 
past president, Mike, I hope that you will share with the club if we might be able to contribute to the food donations and drop stuff off. We, I'm sure there are, are a number of members who um, would love an address or somewhere to drop some donations off. And then, yeah, let's dig into the school adoption. One more thing, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Jermaine is going to be uh, collecting food at John Muir High School uh, this weekend. So anyone who has time to help distribute food in Pasadena US, uh, USD, he will be at John Muir uh, tomorrow and Sunday, I think. Okay, that's it. Awesome. And I will go next to Chrissy Moses and past president Todd Johnson for frontline workers and supporting frontline workers. Sure. Uh, we had a really great group that was excited and interested and came up with a couple ideas um, because we did send the face shields out to organizations working on the front line. We thought we wanted to focus on donating some lunch or something, some sweet treats to probably Union Rescue Mission because they are also an organization of our, or a member of our club, um, as well as reaching out to one of the fire departments downtown, which um, as Lauren mentioned, is one of the busiest because they are responding to a lot of calls for people who are unsheltered. Um, past President Ken will be reaching out to figure out how many people uh, we're looking to donate to, um, how many people need lunch, and Past President Todd will see if we can pair that up with a restaurant that might be willing to help double our, our donation here. Um, and we already have somebody who has offered to contribute $100 towards this project. Um, so Melinda, I just do need to connect with you on how we can send payments to this or how we were thinking that part would work. Um, but if anybody is, oh, and Lauren is willing to actually drop some of the food off as, uh, as the Rotary representative. Um, so if anybody else is interested in contributing towards feeding our frontline workers, just go ahead and email me um, directly and we'll get you added to the list. Amazing, amazing work, you guys. Thank you. Um, I will go to John Spokes next. Hey, everybody. Uh, we had a great group, of course. It's Rotarians. Is there any other kind of group? Um, and we were uh, talking about mental health and suicide prevention. Um, and it was, you know, it's, that's a very large uh, item. So um, we started our conversation really by talking about uh, target groups. So we really want to help veterans. Uh, we want to help uh, elder women, and we want to help those people who are suffering from domestic violence, um, which is particularly uh, alive right now during um, the pandemic. Um, and so uh, a number of us are going to reach out to uh, organizations um, uh, in those particular areas, really because um, the people that are doing that are the specialists. We want to be able to aid that the best we can. So. Um, that's going to be the work that's going to happen immediately. Um, we would like to be of service to Melinda Monterosa because we'd like to help you identify maybe one or two speakers on this subject matter um, to help bring a little bit more uh, education to our membership about this very serious uh, uh, issue in front of us. Um, Great need of service. And, Thank you. Yeah, I, thought, I thought you might like that. Um, and then also, I think in the uh, world of ADOPT, um, um, there are so many organizations that we need to look at. So we are going to put together a list of organizations that are serving this group. Um, and our hope would be that maybe there's an organization that our club could adopt over the course of the year to help out in, in, in any number of ways. Uh, so that was our thoughts. Thanks. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, next, I will go to past president Sharice. I think we were talking about Thank veterans. You. Thank you. Yes, our group, um, which consisted of past president Don Crocker, past president Dave Meshlam, past president Eric Weiss, the one and only Jack Dibb, Ann Ruth, and Jim Hoyt. Uh, we talked about supporting veterans. And Bob Price is a longtime member of LA5. And so Jim has been in touch with him recently. And, and Dave Meshlam is going to make some contact. Um, to see how there might be some opportunities for this group to do some um, of these personal acts of service for our veteran community. And Annie Ruth also has um, a contact through um, work that she and her family have done in the past as well with supporting families of, of veterans. And so 
uh, we're, we're all committing to completing at least one act of service by the end of October, which is a great lead in to Veterans Day. And so I'll stay in touch with this group and we'll share kind of what it is that we've all done. And perhaps that can be either highlighted um, in leading up to Veterans Day through El Rodeo or, or the program itself, whatever it may be. Um, but excited to kind of get some of these ideas, whether it is writing letters, preparing a care package, uh, but we'll have more details. And then also I had just shared with that group that I'll, I'll share with the group here. Um, the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce is producing a virtual job fair in November as well, right around Veterans Day that will highlight um, opportunities for veterans. Um, Matt Ball has already connected me with a great contact that he has, but if there are other groups that are either hiring and specifically focusing on veterans that want to participate in the job fair, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, also, if you have veterans groups that want to receive this information to be able to share these opportunities for veterans, um, let me know. And, and again, myself or obviously Todd could connect you with uh, the chamber as well to do that. So we're just looking for more of those ideas, but excited for us all to commit at least seven acts of service um, for supporting our veteran community. Love it. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, spreading kindness with Brenda Wewall. Hi, everyone. So we had an amazing discussion because just opening it up, just about every person in the group had a long list of things that they had done recently or were doing that related to spreading kindness. And in fact, <clears throat> even in the midst of the group, the way people were interacting with one another, sharing, you know, kind thoughts and um, trying to help each other. There was a lot of kindness flowing within our group. Um, I wanted to thank Maureen for taking notes on it because I was trying to come up with a list of the number of acts of kindness that were being done, but so many were listed. I'm not sure if we were able to get them all. So <clears throat> everything from uh, tipping more to workers, um, to reaching out to people who were shut in or um, other people that you knew that might care, that you wanted to show that you cared, reaching out to people that you pass in the street and saying hello. There were so many wonderful examples of what people are doing and um, it was just really inspiring to hear that. And I, I just feel like being part of Rotary, that's what I heard in all of the other groups as well. It sounded like a tremendous amount of kindness and caring coming from everyone. Great ideas and a lot of resources and things that will be really great to follow up on. So thank you for the Amazing, thank you. And then just really quickly, we have a blood drive opportunity. I'll kick it to past president Todd to touch on that quickly. Yeah, just anyone that's interested, we're doing a blood drive with Cedars. Obviously there's a desperate need for blood right now. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna do it next Friday and Saturday. It'll be at the chamber. So the blood uh, will, will be given, you know, from you to to the people that are at the chamber. But, um, and it also is an incentive, you'll get a free COVID test, and then you'd also get a free uh, antibody test. So if you have an interest in that and wanna do that, I'll, I'll send it over and maybe we can send the flyer out, the link. If anyone interested to sign up, we'd love to have you. Thank you. I mean, so everybody, thank you so much. I This was a, certainly a test, <laughs> a proof of concept, if you will. Um, Rotarians never cease to amaze me. I'm looking out my window and for the first time in three days, I don't even care that it's the wrong color. I feel rejuvenated. I hope that you all feel a little good about the time that you spent today. Um, in the interest of time and my technological difficulties, we are gonna push Marjorie's presentation to next week I will quickly run through some um, upcoming events and then kick it back to President Matt. Melinda, I, can I please interrupt just for a really oh, quick please. second, just while we're on this subject. Um, sure. If somebody, each of the um, chair people or facilitators of each of these group can email me what the group project is, 
um, I'll volunteer Herb and I to put it on our, we have a big service and over, overview service committee list of all the activities we're involved with through the year. So if we need to keep track of these for any number of reasons and, and report out on to what has been accomplished. Um, we'd be happy to do that. Thank you, Lauren. We will, um, I'll follow up with the facilitators today and we'll loop you and Herb into that email thread. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Let's try this guy. Okay, upcoming Friday speakers. Next week, we have Council Member Alan Warren from Sacramento District 2, who is very passionate about solving homelessness and it being in service to his community, not just as a civic leader, but as a human. Um, President Matt is very close with him and very fond of this gentleman. We're excited to have him come speak on September 25th. Thank you, Lauren Schlau. We have Patrick Yorgler from Sentinel Youth Services um, to come talk to us about the work that they do in supporting LA's youth. October 2nd, we have Mr. Stephen Peckman, the Deputy Director of the Stem Cell Research Center from UCLA. And then October 9th, that Friday, we are actually dark, but that is because we have a first five joint club meeting that Wednesday on October 7th. So please mark your calendars. Um, whoops, I'm sorry. Going back. I can't go back. Tech difficulties. Um, you all know Sharice Old Lara, sorry, is our new executive director. And for those that don't know, Charlene is our amazing co chair of the membership division. Um, as I mentioned, October 7th, joint meeting of the first five Rotary Clubs. We will be launching officially a joint service project of the first five Rotary Clubs. October 8th, virtual chef experience with Wolfgang Puck chefs. And that is pretty much it, folks. And then one quick little mention, please do visit the website. Um, we have some fun speakers coming up, one of which is Phil Rosenthal from Somebody Feed Phil on October 16th, which I'm pretty excited about. And I'll kick it back to you, President Matt. Thank you, Melinda. Appreciate all your preparation, especially all of your wonderful speakers. Uh, the speaker that we have coming next week, Ellen Warren, just a little trivia point for you. His son was just given a full ride scholarship to UCI, yeah, Irvine, University of California, Irvine, in soccer. And as an African American, really handsome kid. This kid's like a supermodel in addition to being a super <laughs> soccer player. So we can tease Alan a little bit because he's already this formidable guy out of Sacramento. But just a fun trivia note that we've got his Sacramento roots right down here in Southern California with us now. So we love that. Uh, Want to let you know that uh, I'm reminded of this, of the phrase from A Tale of Two Cities, where it is, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. And I find that in the most tragic times, the very best of us comes out. At least that's where it's revealed. And this morning I was on a call when somebody was talking about Utah and how Utah was hit with hurricane winds up to 100 miles an hour this week. And they said they were coming down the next morning, driving down from Northern Utah to Southern Utah. And they counted in an hour span time, maybe two hours, they counted 23 semi-trucks that had blown over on the freeway in those winds. In addition to every neighborhood that they came upon, they were looking at gigantic trees over 100 years old had just fallen and toppled and tree after tree after tree and just complete devastation. Uh, they've been without power for many days. It was declared a state of an emergency in the state of Utah. And I've got a lot of colleagues up there that I work with. So I was just marveling at how after they were done talking, they said, but you know, the greatest advantage was that our entire family who's without power, all of our children, and they had a lot of kids, a lot of grandkids, were forced to all go to grandma and grandpa's house. So they all came to their house and they said, it is the very best of time in our lives right now because we are together as a family and it is empowering, it's uplifting, it's energizing, it's all the things you hope for to have your family close to you, especially in hard times, but it makes all of these all of these things take on such a significant meaning that with us as Rotarians to meet together like this, it feels like family. And it feels so very special to be able to be with you and to say thank you for letting us do these things and to be a, a part of things because the stuff that comes out of our meetings inspires and uplifts and engages me in a way that I never expected. I give you an example. The speaker that has Melinda coming, that Melinda has coming on stem cell research my sister started taking out implants of her own stem cells in the last 10 years. And her husband, 
who has Parkinson's disease and could not hold a glass of water without it shaking and spilling right out of the table is now perfectly still because of stem cell research and implants that he's been doing. And my sister was blind in her right eye. And because of all the implants that she's been receiving over the last 10 years, she's now not only great vision out of her right eye, but a changed person because of this. So I look forward to that speaker, Melinda. These things are very personal to all of us. I know we all have stories and examples of these things that are very powerful, but I have to tell you how grateful I am to be part of this Rotary Club and as part of all that we're doing. And thank you for everyone's contributions today, especially. I know that it, uh, it's been a sacred day for us and it is a sacred time, but despite that, there is a time to dance and there is a time <laughs> to end things on a good note and a very positive thing. And so we, how, how could you be surprised then to know that Eric Weiss is going to take us out today? Melinda, we'll let you uh, introduce this. <laughs> this Eric's going to do it. Take it away, uh, DJ E. Put me on speaker view. You know, uh, I didn't know what this meeting was going to be about. So when I picked this piece of music, it had nothing to do with today. Um, but you know, something I think is kind of fun is going on around all of us because we can all still do this with a smile on our face. Get ready. Get ready, everybody. Get ready. Only, only Eric Weiss. You great. look good, Eric. <laughs> Ken Skill, he keeps dancing no matter where the music's playing. Yay! I turned around my video. Ah, uh, freak out! Hi, Melinda! Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Have Thank a great you, rest of your Friday. Have Thank a good you. one, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Wonderful, wonderful. Bye. 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 Bye.